Well, hello, everybody. Dean Hefta back with you on this edition of Sage Light from the Illinois chapter of National Speakers Association. I am joined by the one and the only Rosie Zelinskis. Rosie, welcome to the program. Hi, Dean. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be chatting with you today. Oh, I am really excited to learn more about your journey and the people that you serve with your message. So let's start with that. Tell me about uh, who you're focused on, the things that you do with your work, and give us a picture of that. Yeah, so I am a 31-year corporate veteran. I've been around the block quite a few times trying to advance my career. And a few years ago, I decided that I wanted to use my expertise to help those young women use an elevator, whereas I had to use the stairs. So I wanted to shorten their timeline for them to move up the corporate ladder. There's so many women that are so hard on themselves, but I empower women to overcome their professional obstacles. We foster confidence, and more importantly, we create their personalized career roadmap, which is really important. Wow, that's awesome. So it sounds like you you learned to play the game the hard way, and now you've got, uh, as gamers would say, maybe some cheat codes yes. that help, to pe- help people to understand which buttons to push in what order uh, to get whatever their vision is. So what, what would you say some of the, um, I don't know if you want to call them myths or misconceptions that me- maybe people have in their career that you help them to maybe reframe? Yeah, the very first one is that your career cannot stay on autopilot. You need to manage your career intentionally because if it stays on autopilot, before you know it, five or 10 years go by and you haven't paid any attention to your career. So people need to manage their career intentionally. So that's the bigger thing. And kind of along those lines, you have to have a plan. You have to have a strategy. I call it a career roadmap because with your career roadmap, you can kind of see where you want to go versus, again, leaving your your career manage itself. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions that people have. So I'm curious, um, how would I know if I've been maybe in that autopilot mode? What would be some things that would give me clues that maybe I've been a little bit too passive or a little bit too autopilot on my career? So you will see other people, your peers getting promoted, getting raises, and you're not. So that's kind of like the first clue that other people are paying attention and managing their career intentionally. Got it. Um, What are some of the things that might keep people from being more uh, intentional uh, or more planned out for their careers? Are there some things that are preventing that, some stories they tell themselves, or, or what should we know about that? Yeah, so I would say the the biggest thing is just not knowing what to do. So taking the first step is always going to be the hardest thing to do. Reaching out to people, maybe observing what others are doing. I had a woman tell me that she knew she was doing something wrong when she saw her peers getting promoted. And then when she started talking to her peers, they were like, she was like, well, what are you doing And they're like, oh, I make sure that I have relationships with the decision makers. So they intentionally uh, get advocates and sponsors so that they know, hey, I want to get promoted. So just so you know, if you hear of any opportunities. So talking yourself up with those people that are in that leadership position. And interestingly enough, the chief of staff is a great person to get to know <laughs> for the CEO. So, yeah, so those are a few things that that I've heard that people do. It sounds really like um, kind of using a bit of maybe some marketing skills to get people thinking about you when you're not there. Exactly, yes. They are, your goal is to to make sure that they keep you top of mind, whether it's you being visible by volunteering, by sending them an article, by helping them on their own projects, by mentoring people that they have in their teams. You can do a number of things, but visibility and being top of mind on those leaders um, just day to day is really, really, really important. So walk me through some of the ways that you get this message to the women that you're that you're helping to 
learn the lessons that you've already learned the hard way. How do you connect with them? What's the avenues that your message gets out? Yeah, so I'm largely on LinkedIn. So that's going to be my hub, my platform, because all the corporate people that I serve are on LinkedIn. I do have a podcast. So my company is called No Woman Left Behind. My podcast is also called No Woman Left Behind. And even though it's for women, all of the the techniques and strategies that I talk about, men are absolutely able to use them. So the podcast and LinkedIn are the two places that I'm constantly in. I'm also on TikTok. So I've been doing just little one minute TikToks on tips on how how people can continue to advance in their career. And one of the things that I try to focus on is like kind of my, my three key principles, which is the first one is you are deserving and worthy of the career of your dream. So you have to believe it so that it can happen. The second one is let's get that growth mindset in place. And then the third one is that career roadmap. So those are the three things that I'm constantly harping on because that's how you manage your career intentionally. So I'm curious about your first one there. Um, Does it surprise people that maybe they haven't been giving themselves permission? Because it, it, it's kind of a, a well, it, people aren't intentionally holding themselves back, but how do they wrestle with that and, and expand on that point a little bit more? Yeah, so I think it boils down to you think that you don't deserve to, say, apply for a job. This is a really common one, and I think a lot of people know about this one. But I was working with a woman, and she wanted to apply for this promotion. And when it came down to, we talked about it. I was already working with her. We talked about it. she was going to apply. And then when I checked in on her next, she's like, oh, I didn't apply. And when I uh, I was like, well, why didn't you apply? She's like, well, I went back and I read the job description again, and I didn't have all the job characteristics that the job description called for. And I was like, well, you know, common statistic is that men apply for jobs having 50% of the skills, whereas women, we hold ourselves back and we we wait to have 100% of the skills. So by the time you have 100%, number one, you're overqualified, and number two, the job's gone. (laughs) So, but that's, part of that limiting belief that you're like, oh, no, I'm not good enough to apply for that job. And subconsciously, you are thinking that you're not deserving and worthy of that position. So we have to kind of tweak those thoughts that you think that keep you from doing something, whether it's applying for the job, going to ask for that promotion, going to ask for that raise, having that difficult conversation, or simply asking for feedback. Mm. That's great. So with the work that you're doing, then how does speaking tie into your your business, uh, with your clients, with your audience? What role does speaking play for you? Excuse me. Speaking has been so integral. I have I have been a keynote speaker a couple of times. One of them was at the Accounting and Finance Association. And so the event that I attended or that I was a keynote speaker, there were 200 women. And it was such an incredible experience because I was able to impact 200 people with my message. And the biggest thing to me, Dean, is that I got them thinking about their careers. I got them thinking to see what could be possible for them. So speaking to me, is incredibly important because I am able to deliver my message. And if I can help one person say, hey, you know what? There is a job that I'm interested in. And gosh darn it, I'm not going to apply for it. <laughs> you know, So it, it's to me, it's very rewarding if I can deliver my message and just get women to think about how they may be holding themselves back. So it's it's very powerful. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, a big part for you is delivering that awareness. Yes. Maybe I wasn't even, maybe I didn't know the kind of stories that I was telling myself. And I didn't recognize that I was waiting to be perfect in my uh, qualifications. When in reality is, can I tell myself that I have the ability to become qualified? Because we know nobody's ready for the job that they're 
taking next, right? Your, your growth happens in the next job. So your work from the stage then is helping people grow that awareness. And then maybe that turns into coaching and mentoring, uh, whether it's people inside their organization, um, women's, you know, uh, professional networking groups. Uh, that's something that I've seen women in business do really well is, you know, create those communities of support um, to, to help each other and coach each other and, and guide each other. I think that's a real, a real strength that I've seen. What, what role do you see mentoring and, and coaching being uh, on uh, women in, in business's journey? Oh, gosh, I think it's so important because, you know, I actually was talking to somebody earlier and they said, you know, when you're trying to help somebody, it doesn't help them if you're climbing a mountain and you're at the top and they're way at the bottom. If, if, if you're at the top, there's no possible way that you can help that person at the bottom, even at the middle. But if they're just one or two steps behind you, you can pull back and reach and pull them up. So you as the mentor or as the uh, networking connection have to kind of go back and almost forget everything that you know and kind of go to the level of the person that you're trying to help so that you can be at their level and for them to be able to relate to where they could be someday without being so intimidated. And that's what NSA has done for me because I started my speaking career in 2019. And actually I started with the NSA Academy. So that was the beginning of my whole career and it was a phenomenal uh, experience, but that's what I think uh, speaking or mentoring other potential entrepreneurs is like, we need to go back down to the beginning and say, okay, let's, what's one thing that I can help you with that you're, that's not going to overwhelm you instead of, Hey, you have to create your signature talk. <laughs> so that's a little bit way up the mountain. <laughs> that's great. So yeah. And it's an amazing journey for you going from, you know, three decades of corporate expertise. And now as an entrepreneur, that is focused on helping that person that you used to be yes. and then incorporating speaking uh, as a part of that journey. Uh, was there some things that you had to get over for yourself when it, when it came to being on stage and, and crafting that message in a much maybe different platform than what you'd uh, experienced in the corporate side? Well, yes. The, the main reason why I joined NSA is because I didn't know anything about the speaking business at all. And then aside from joining NSA, I also joined Toastmasters because one of the fears is getting up and speaking in front of public. Now, granted, Dean, I've been in corporate training for 20 years now. So I'm used to speaking in front of my team. Sometimes it was one or 200 people, you know, depending on what training I had to deliver, but it's very different to do it on a completely different topic and doing it in person or even virtually. You have to be more conscientious because they have to be there. Like my team had to be there. These people, they're there because they want to be. So you need to make the the delivery of your presentation, not only valuable for them because they're spending time, but also relatable and uh, engaging and somewhat entertaining too. So they're all of that I have learned over the last few years because I did not know any of that beforehand. Well, and I can uh, certainly emulate with you when it comes to the Speakers Academy. So that was a big part of my journey into the speaking world because what Academy did for me was it really pulled that curtain back mm -hmm. to better understand the business of speaking because that's not something that gets talked about a lot. And I've appreciated that about our community. Mm -hmm. of, we've got some Hall of Fame members uh, in our midst and we bring in to the Academy some really uh, amazing expertise to, I, I guess I found it, be an accelerator, right? So. Yeah. Help that elevator. These, yeah, an e elevator, exactly, <laughs> to use you, your metaphor, right? Um, because it's all about how do I compress time? And we do that through the expertise and the experience of others. And as humans, we're great emulators and imitators. And if I can see it and I can hear it, I can take the pieces that maybe fit for me. Mm -hmm. And so rather than um, adopting everybody else's strategy, I can take the pieces that are right 
and make it my own. And what we know in speaking and professional speakers is there are no two that are alike. And everybody's business model is a little bit different. Their audience is a little different. Their message is a little different. And that's what's so cool. You know, when we come together, we're not competitors. You know, we're here supporting each other um, and, and helping each other and sharing tips. And And I want to thank you for sharing uh, your story with us. Any parting words where you want people to connect with you or, or anything here before we wrap up? Yeah, sure. So they can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, my handle is Rosie Career Coaching, or they can go to my website, which is nowomanleftbehind.com. And that's W-O-M-A-N, nowomanleftbehind.com. But I just want to say, Dean, thank you so much for doing this because I have so much respect for all of the people in the NSA community. I learned so much every time that I, you know, we actually just had a training last week on AI. It was phenomenal. I learned so much. So I think if it wasn't because of NSA, I would not be where I am today. So I so appreciate the community. And now that I am partying the corporate world and being in my business full time, I'm back as a full time engaged member, which I'm so excited about. So thank you so much, Dean. That's awesome. We're excited to have you as a part of this journey and know how big of a contributor you're going to be to other people as a part of this community. So thank you, Rosie Zelinskis. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Sounds good, Dean. Thank you.